Hi, this is Mike. Welcome back to the Moodle programming series. The goal of this series is to create a custom Moodle block. In this session, we will discuss a little bit in, in more detail than we have that version.php. And alongside of that, we will also discuss some coding styles. To get started, let's go ahead and go to the development page and scroll down and let's go to coding guidelines on this page well I'll just read this is this this page is a top level page describing Moodle's coding guidelines it is a place to start if you want to know how to write code for Moodle so there's a number of topics Moodle architecture plugins coding style is the one we want to focus on today security XHTML and CSS, JavaScript, internationalization, accessibility, usability, performance database, and events. So there's quite a bit. Unit testing, acceptance testing, other standards. So there's quite a bit. I mean, honestly, there's a lot to learn when it comes to programming in Moodle. The learning curve is rather steep. You know, some of the stuff is just learning how Moodle does it and then that is a just a topic all of its all of its own and that's kind of what we're trying you know we're going to take a look at a little bit today let's go to the coding style page and here so this document describes style guidelines for de for developers working on or with moodle code it talks purely about the mechanics of code layout and the choices we have made for moodle for details about using the, the Moodle API to get things done, see the coding guidelines. That's, that's where we were just at. Goals. Consistent coding style is important for any development project when many de developers are involved. A standard style helps to ensure the code is easier to read and understand, which helps overall quality. And I totally agree with that. The main point of, of this is we're not going to drill down into every little detail. So as you can see, there's all kinds of just almost every little kind of minutia is explained in this document. And, you know, and it's going to take a while for anyone to to learn it. But the only way you can is just, is just to start. So here's like here's some uh, uh, naming conventions for file names classes class name should always be lowercase english words separated by underscores and we saw that where uh like uh in our in our block example block underscore mike underscore basic and the block part of this is actually called the they call it franken style let's see if we can't find that Frankenstyle component names refers to the naming convention that is used to uniquely identify a Moodle plugin based on the type of plugin and its name. So like so the type of plugin is block and then the name of the the name of the plugin follows. So, so we'll that's just the way that Moodle does it. It's it's fairly typical to identify variable names with like if they're an integer or string to prepend an S or an I or, you know, or STR or whatever. So it's, it's just a convention to help not only for readability purposes, but I'm pretty sure in terms of processing, it's easier, easier to process a whole group of blocks or a whole, a whole group of classes whose prefix is block. So there's probably a lot of different advantages to doing that. And that's what Frankenstyle means. And, you know, we'll see that quite often. And, and, and again, this, this page is it's more of this to make you aware that it's here and then going through every little detail. 
the other thing that we want to make note of is Moodle uses Moodle uses PHP doc as the format for for comments and let me just read what it says Moodle stays as close as possible to standard PHP doc format to document our files classes and functions this helps IDEs like NetBeans or Eclipse to work properly for Moodle developers and allows also allows us to gener generate web documentation automatically. PHPDoc has a number of tags that can be used in different places, files, classes, and functions. We have some particular rules for using them in Moodle that you must follow. So here are you know here are some of the tags, or the tags are listed below. Copyright, license, param. There's there's a lot of them. You know, I haven't found any online documentation. They, Moodle does have a, a phpdocs.moodle.org site, but it actually points to the tracker, so I'm not really sure about that. I've actually emailed one of the people that, the owner, I, th I think, of, of the, or the community sites. I've sent them an email, and we'll see what, what they say. You know, it, you know sometimes those kind sometimes documentation like that's helpful sometimes it's not sometimes it's just as easy to go into the code itself and just search for what you're looking for and we'll see you know an example of that again this is just making you aware of of, of a couple items well, let's go ahead and go to the source code let's take a look at version php here we have so, so let's just talk about what's in this file. Go through it in a little more detail. This top part is simply the header of, of all files in Moodle will have this boilerplate header. And basically it just talks about the general public license and gives a link to the gnu.org site. And then what follows is this is the format for the PHP doc. There's a forward slash two, two asterisks, and then it's, it's kind of like C programming comments with an additional asterisk on the, on the front end. Back in the, the documents, back in here, it would actually tell you exactly, you know, what's needed what's needed where so we won't go in like I say we won't go into excruciating detail there so we'll just talk about what's here in this case we have a you know a really short description of uh, the block current user info, info block well this is just we'll rename that we'll just go Mike's basic block it is the package it is a block the sub package meaning the name of the plugin Mike underscore basic and we'll do this we'll go 2014 and we'll just do Mike and we'll just do Mike here too as the author so and the final one is there's a, a license link and that simply goes to the gnu.org site Now, we'll talk about this in, in a little bit. For now, let's go ahead and just skip down to the this plugin object. If this page were not being developed, like say within a framework such as Moodle, you know, you would use the new operator to create a new class. Well, obviously, the framework has created this plugin object for this specific this specific plugin. In this case, we have there's three properties of the of the uh, object that we're going to that are basic to to this file, and the first one is is the version. But you know, my personal preference is anytime you make a change, I would I would update the version, increment 
increment the hour or the you know the hour in the day whatever you know whatever it is that that needs to be done and you know the format is obvious it's year month day and then 24 hour clock the next property is requires pretty simple concept when this is set it will tell which version of Moodle minimum is required and again the format is the year the month the day and then the hour and the place where you find this information is on docs.moodle.org forward slash dev forward slash releases and on this page you'll see these release dates for whatever reason you have to require a certain release well this is where you find that information now the component is the this is written in that Franken style convention where there's it's prepended with the type of plugin followed by an underscore and then the name the name of the the plugin so let's discuss this a little bit you know when you when you first look at it you know you, you know what it's going to do if it says defined if defined or die so if moodle underscore internal is defined then fine if it's not defined then die and you know you can guess as to why they put it here and obvious to me it's like you know it's an access they don't want people to be, be able to access code indiscriminately without it being you know within the framework I wanted to find out you know exactly where this was defined and to see what it said just so I have just a little more information let's go ahead and let's log in and I'll show you how I found I have I've got the file but I'll show you how I found it and it's pretty straightforward and it's, and it's kind of a it's, a it's a way to to find a lot of different information in the source code could download source code to your desktop and search it that way with some kind of text editor too but if you don't you know it's just preference well, let's go ahead and go to I've got an alias moo that takes us to the document root or actually takes us well, to Moodle's document root and here we want to use grep you can man grep it's just a search utility that will find strings and files and we want to use some switches we want to use I for no uh, no case sensitivity we want to use n for we want a line number in the file and then we want it to do it recursively so let's let's look we want to look for since it says defined so we want to find out if it where it is or where, where the define is at so we'll do Moodle and we'll use a wildcard here and put this in quotes and then we want to recursively search the current directory and we're in the Moodle directory so it'll give some results and right you know right off the right off the bat we see one a define here but it's actually in the install PHP so we know that's just gonna execute once so that's not really the one we're looking for and we'll let it set here and run a little bit more okay now he here's the one that let's let it finish this is really the one we're looking for here in lib setup.php so what I did was I went ahead and well I'll show you how I did that you can actually go in and download right click on source files download 
that'll bring up a dialog to where you can specifically grab and download specific files. So we want the library or the LIB. directory and we want the setup setup.php so we'll just download that. I'll probably just overwrite what I've got there already. So here it is. And let's go ahead and search for define, we'll, we'll search for Moodle type here internal okay there we go so it says if it's not defined then define it so and it says a comment above it it says use by library scripts to check they are being called by Moodle so what the reasoning was when they did this and what, what were the circumstances that caused them to to create this statement I don't know you can just guess so let's go back to the version.php so that's about all for for this session uh, we've gone over a few, you know a few things this we've gone over the fact that this is just a default boilerplate license agreement we've looked at the PHP docs and some coding styles we know where coding styles are now and we've we know what we understand a little bit better what this is it's in it's a uh, used in library scripts and we've discussed the uh, version and when to increment it anytime you make a change and there, there is some uh, functionality, I didn't mention that earlier, but there is some functionality that, that takes place if you do do an upgrade that Moodle actually will recognize there is a version change and then specific files will be called depending upon what, what exactly you know, you're doing in your block. And we, we'll discuss that a little bit later when we add some more, more functionality. The requires, well, we found out where that where we can find that number or, or that date and then we did also find out a little bit about the convention of Frankenstyle. So that's about it for now. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you later. Bye.